This is the meditation that uh, was to be for the nativity of John the Baptist after morning prayer on Wednesday the 24th of June. And the meditation was cut off by a power cut before we began. So I'm going to read the passage of scripture to remind us uh, before we go into meditation it is taken from the gospel of Luke it's chapter 3 verses 1 to 17 in the 15th year of the reign of emperor Tiberius when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea and Herod was ruler of Galilee and his brother Philip ruler of the region of Ituraya and Trachonitis and Lysanias ruler of Abilene during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming and baptizing a repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight, Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. And the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers! Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor, for I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now, the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What then should we do? In reply he said to them, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even the tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And what, would, what should we do? He said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. I'll say a few things about the text and then we'll go into a meditation. So the reading began with context in the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius and then there's a list of, of uh, people 
who are considered important in that place, in that time. Mass of context. And then it says the word came, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, still context, in the wilderness. So this known person named John, son of Zechariah, within the context of space and time. receives the word of God in the wilderness the margin borderland threshold the word comes there John is the wild man of the New Testament like a prophet of old we find him in the wilderness and it is there with him that Jesus comes to begin his ministry somehow John seems to be aware that he is not the subject or object of all that context we are not the names given to us contextualized impressions with which people consider they know us context is elusive it depends on point of view if we say John was born in the Middle East 2000 years ago what does that actually mean the Middle East of what if we look at a globe how do we choose what, she, what is East, what is West, what is Middle East? How do we choose who is important in any given time or space? We are not the context or the contextualized self. But it is significant that it is in the wilderness that John receives the word of God. It is in the wilderness where the way of the Lord, the way of Yahweh, the way of I am, the way of Yeshua, the way of the Messiah, Christ, is being prepared in John and by John and through John. In the wilderness, John says, now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. And that those that don't bear fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. The prophet Elijah about whom we also read this morning and with whom in the New Testament John the Baptist is associated even seen by some as some kind of reincarnation of this prophet Elijah is likened to fire 
His words burn like a fiery torch. In the wilderness. Those contextualized impressions of self. Are burned up. you spent any time in wildness at a desert or forest or by the sea on a mountain away from gatherings of people cities, conurbations even villages No doubt you have noticed how the wildness doesn't care about your contextualization of anything at all. If you name a tree a tree, the tree doesn't care. The tree simply is. Even in a short time, our precious preconceptions begin to fall away, and another way of seeing takes its place. A deeper, simplified seeing initially feeling you brood of vipers says the Baptist to those who've come out earnestly no doubt to be baptised And then, a succession of them ask, what should we do? Strip yourselves of what isn't necessary. Give away what is extra, don't cheat. Be content with your wages, don't abuse your power. Repent. Turn away from all your egoic comforts and aspirations, turn back to God. Let the useless parts of you be cut down and thrown into the fire. Be consumed, turn to ash, return to the earth, begin again. Be reborn. Go down into the water. Die to the comforts and aspirations of your ego. Your precious worries precious schemes, plans come up again cleansed begin again, repent return to the source turn back towards the Christ towards I am towards who we truly are baptize you with water but the one who is more powerful is coming Mashiach Christ is coming I'm not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire his winnowing fork is in his hand even now to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire in John's gospel the Baptist is heard saying I must decrease the 
Christ must increase. My ego, my false self, my contextualized self, must decrease. So that the true self in Christ can take up the space which is left. So the wilderness is a place to go both physically and metaphorically. to encounter the space or spaciousness in which we encounter Christ in which we can find who we really are and whose we are So we will enter the, the wilderness now, the margin, borderland, the threshold. I'll just take a few breaths. Allowing ourselves to become still. As you are sitting, just uh, adjust your posture to be comfortable with your feet on the ground, rooted in the earth, back straight, shoulders relaxed. Be aware for a moment of your body. Sounds around you. You're not going to be trying to exclude these sounds. Or necessarily the, the feelings in your body. They're going to be there in the wilderness. But you are at peace with them. You don't need to dwell on them. Just let them be. So finding for a moment a deeper breath Consciously breathing in through the nose, filling up your lungs, and now gently, slowly expelling the air through your nose. And again, breathing in the calm and the peace. And breathing out gently, attachments, concerns, thought. Stay like this for a, a few moments, just breathing in gently and deeply, breathing out slowly. Simply receiving peace calm and exhaling any tension any preoccupation ok 
Okay, we find his stillness. And we listen to the stillness. A deeper kind of listening now. A very deep sensing. As we listen to the stillness, we become infused with the stillness. But there is a kind of alertness in us now. Here we are in the stillness. Or perhaps you now can imagine a wilderness, maybe one where you have been. or a desert of your imagination. But imagine it now. With the deeper senses. Listen to the sounds. Take in the aromas. Look deeply at the sand or the earth, the vegetation, the sky, the horizon, the undulations, the valleys, whatever is in your scene. You can observe yourself in the scene. Perhaps you are going down to the Jordan to be baptized. Whatever your scene be there. It is a wilderness, it has spaciousness, notice the smell, the touch, the sounds, sights, taste. In this sensing awareness grows. Maybe focus on your breath a moment again. As I breathe in, I know I'm breathing in. As I breathe out, I know I'm breathing out. I am here. Now observe the one who is sensing. Observe the one who is in the desert. the observer, not the contextualized feeling one, 
for the one who observes. You'll find your true self here. Stay with the spaciousness. Know that Christ is here. There's nothing to do here. Nothing to be. Simply the being. Let's stay here. Ten minutes.
Yeah, no. 